Good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast, Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRNAM for Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. And here's our top story, the financial impacts of caregiving and what catches people off guard. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Laurel Whitman. She's the president of the Well Spouse Association. Laurel, it's great to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, and, and and this is our second consecutive show on caregiving. If you happen to check it out, we had a great guest yesterday talking about getting his mother uh, some support, some caregiving support. She's in her 90s and had some challenges. But our, the focus on our show is really the financial impact when you're a caregiver. Why don't you take us through what? Give us what are some of the things that we're not thinking about uh, sure. in terms of finances. Yeah, so let me, I'll frame it a little bit for you and, and give you kind of an, a bit of an overview of what a lot of people are spending here. So it's probably no secret that chronically ill or disabled people have to spend a lot of money. Um, it's expensive to be that person. It's expensive to be that caregiver. Um, AARP earlier this year came out with some data that said 75% of family caregivers reported routine spending on caregiving along the average lines of $7,200 per year on out-of-pocket costs. Um, that's a pretty significant burden for most families. Uh, anecdotally, I would say that the experience of um, members in well spouse, which focuses on spousal caregivers, uh, has been much higher than that $7,200. That may be because our finances are more directly linked with our care recipients being married to them. Um, it may be too that our members happen to be in you know later stages of more advanced diseases, and so the spending naturally increases as things progress. Um, in one small survey we did of spousal caregivers earlier this year, 75% reported lost income and expenses of more than $10,000 in 2020. So that's a little bit of data to um, to highlight this discrepancy. Yeah. So yeah, we. You know, no, please, go ahead. Go I, no, no, go ahead. Finish your thought. I was going to say, you know, we, we see a lot of discussion in the media and policy about some of the things that make illness so costly. And I'm thinking of things like medication costs or uh, medical co-pays. These are things that families are very familiar with and talking about and complaining about. But there are a lot of other expenses that catch our families uh, off guard when they uh, catch us by surprise when we end up in this role. And I thought we could bring some light uh, to some of those today both for people who aren't caregivers yet, but um, folks who are caregivers, it might give them something to, uh, you know, to, to find a little savings for, for themselves. Yeah. So let's, I, and I want to do that. I want to unpack Please. a lot of that because I think yeah. it'll be good for people to have that, that list. Let's, let's focus first though on these, the financial impact. And I think, um, you know, just using this, this other guest's experience, I mean, he did not anticipate the cost of what that would be. You know, he was, he was talking to people, um, trying to network within his community to find a care, a caregiver, uh, and 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 some of these people had used this caregiver or that caregiver for a, a rate ten years ago. But but things have really uh, changed. Um, the the rates have really gone up, and and insurance a lot of times, if you don't have long term care insurance or some type of support, that that, that expense can go up significantly, as you indicated. Yeah, that's exactly right. And really, that's kind of where we can skip to. That's the big expense for most families in my situation, that if you end up with a partner or uh, a family member who needs 24-hour care, um, maybe they don't need 24-hour care, but you need to get out of the house. You need to go to the grocery store. You need to run errands, do all the things that you know come with, with uh, living as an adult. Um, you will often need an aid. I think there's somewhere around seven out of 10 families end up using aids at some point. <clears throat> Pardon me. And the costs of them have, have gotten well out of reach for the average family. So in my area, um, I have an aide. She works for us basically full time at this point and 10 hours a day. And it's $27 an hour. Um, that's an average rate. That's an urban area. You know, it can vary from there. But um, on average across the U.S., I think I saw data that um, the average spend is $23, $24 an hour for that person. Um, and for the most part, like you said, if you don't have long-term uh, insurance, if you don't have Medicaid, then those costs are borne out of pocket. And that, I think, is the biggest thing that surprises people. They assume they have Cadillac insurance. They assume that um, Medicare will step in and pay some of these expenses for them. And the reality of it is that they really won't. 
Laurel, let's, you mentioned uh, the cost of health care. Are there things that the government, whether it's state and local or federal, are looking at? I know your organization is an advocate for spousal caregivers, but look, uh, what, what you're experiencing... What someone we do else helps. <laughs> yeah, helps everyone. What we do helps everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. So are there, are there initiatives in the Congress... Uh, in local state governments, in your home state, in, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and other places that are um, uh, looking to help lower this cost and help families? Yeah, there are. You know, um, we've been pleased with some of the initiatives that have been included uh, up till this point in uh, the Biden administration's plans, um, both the, uh, the infrastructure bill as well as some of the caregiving bills. There are groups that are very active um, in trying to introduce um, either offsets or deductions to some of the spending that working families have, um, you know, when they have to pay basically to be able to go to work and have to and have caregivers come in. Um, so there are initiatives underway. This it feels like this is a a bit of a unique moment coming on the heels of both a president who advocates strongly for that and has a family history that, um, you know, he's I think he's very cognizant of the role of caregiving because of the challenges his family has personally faced with uh, different medical conditions, and we're coming off the heels of this pandemic, which has really brought to light, um, you know, the the role that caregivers need to play. It's highlighted how difficult the decision to put family members into facilities are. And so there's a big push now to have more spending that's outside of facilities so that people can be cared for at home if that's where they want to be. And for the most part, they do. And what about things like Medicare and Medicaid? I know there has been talk, and maybe you're alluding to this, about expanding Medicare to a greater pool of, of, of people. Um, and, and also including things like dental benefits and whatnot. But, you know, look, we're, we're all going to age. You and I are going to age. Uh, people who are 22. Look, I was once 22 years old. And I know it's hard <laughs> to believe, but I was once a young man. And, um, and, and, you know, when you're that young, you think you're infallible. But eventually we yeah. will find ourselves and our loved ones in this place. And, um, you know, any, la any last thoughts for this segment on that? On that? I mean, just trying yeah. to get everyone rowing in the same direction here. Yeah, no, it's it's important. You know, I'm um, I would say that people need to be careful to vote where their values are right to make sure that you are choosing politicians, both at the local level, because Medicaid is generally administered at the state level and Medicare is administered uh, at the federal level. Make sure that the people that you want in office are doing the things for those programs that you want them to do. I think that's it's a really important um it's a really important message to get out there that it's it's easy to pick up the phone. It's easy to vote and make sure that your values kind of align with with what politicians and, and policymakers can make happen for you. Yeah, got to pick up that phone. It's it's a uh, active uh, constitutional republic. Laurel, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, don't get caught off guard. We're going to go through what you could possibly face around caregiving, you're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome 
to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit Repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. We're talking to Laurel Whitman of the Well Spouse Association. Laurel, thanks for staying with us this morning. Absolutely. Thank you. And, and by the way, we are not doing this topic enough justice. <laughs> I mean, this is television, media. People can go to the Well Spouse site for a lot more detail, a lot more information. But let's talk about some of these things that catch you off guard. And, and you, you have experience, um, you know, both, uh, you know, anecdotally and also through your membership. Uh, That's right. You've experienced all of these things. So what are some of the things that you might, might catch an individual off guard if they are becoming a caregiver? Sure. So we'll talk about some of the smaller ones first. And you're right. I have a lot of experience. I've been a caregiver for a long time. I've I've talked with a lot of caregivers along this journey. Um, small things, like my husband has a lot of hospital stays, and when he's in the hospital and I need to be there, I need to buy meals. I need to pay parking expenses. You know, I went back for this segment and looked at how much I spent for a three-week stay he had several years back, $500 on just parking so that I could be there, um, you know, on site with him. Um, things like getting to medical appointments if you don't have your own vehicle. Um, people don't think about it. You think you call a cab company and they'll have a wheelchair accessible cab ready for you. They may have one. It may be in, you know, on the other side of the county from where you are. And if you need that, that person to, um, to be with you for your whole appointment, you may have to pay for that. You know, it can get very expensive for families that are already facing this kind of compression from the loss of income that many of us face, as well as these higher expenses. Um, things that people don't um, think about. So medical equipment is often covered by insurance or Medicare, and the equipment is very expensive. It's designed to keep people living as independently as possible. Um, things like wheelchairs, lifts to get them out of bed, shower chairs. You know, this is not glamorous stuff, but it's really, these are tools that help you get the, the work of caregiving done. You normally can't try this equipment in advance. It's very expensive. You buy it, you hope it works. It often doesn't, it doesn't meet your exact needs. Um, it's not returnable for safety reasons. It can often be resold because an insurance company has helped you pay for it. Um, and I joke that my, my garage is a, a graveyard of medical equipment that my husband has used over the years. It's, it's stuff that no longer works or it doesn't fit him in the first place and it's just sitting out there. And that's, those are dollars sitting, literally sitting in my garage that, that I can't turn back into dollars when I, when I want them to, to spend on something that is useful to me. Um, many medical expenses that you would think are covered by insurance are not, you know, again, not very glamorous, but catheter supplies, feeding tube supplies, wound care, these sort of things. Insurance maybe covers one item per week for you, but you need it every day, or they cover one item per month and you need it every week. Um, you may not get the coverage of the, the tools that work best. And so families have to purchase these things ourselves. Um, so these are some of the smaller ones. Um, a couple of sneaky ones that I like to point out, special diets. You know, celiac disease comes to mind. People who have to eat gluten-free food. It's getting easier to source the ingredients that, um, you know, are necessary for those kind of very strict medical diets. But it's still not easy for everyone. They're not available everywhere. Um, GI patients, cardiovascular patients, same kind of thing. They can end up on these diets that are very costly. Um, here's another one that most people don't think about. Household utilities. And you might have seen this for uh, with working from home during COVID, that when suddenly people are in the house all the time, your utility bill shoots up. Um, there mm -hmm. can actually be a medical reason for this. Um, my husband has MS, and MS is um, notorious for being a very difficult disease to deal with in hot weather. 
it literally makes you physically weaker. And so our utility bills, you know, are very expensive because I have to keep the same temperature year round, you know, hot, cold, no matter what. Um, if the AC goes out, I can't let it not be repaired. It has to be repaired right away so that my house is, is safe for him. So these are kind of a couple of funny things that people don't really think about, I think, as medical expenses, but they're very much tied to, um, tied to their, their conditions. And then you get in, into the bigger ones that, you know, again, will feel familiar, but come as a surprise. So accessible vehicles, they're helpful to have because, again, that cab is on the other side of the county from you and it's not very convenient. They cost a minimum, in my experience, of $20,000 to modify. And because it's a wheelchair vehicle, it's got to be a big SUV or van. So you're starting at a base price of about $40,000, um, even for a used one. Just for a, a point of uh, a discussion here, I found a six-year-old accessible van last night um, that you could purchase. It has 172,000 miles on it. That is a really old car, $35,000. That's just your starting price for a vehicle that, you know, really would be difficult to resell in any other circumstance. Um, people spend a lot of money on their houses, right? It's when you have a neurodegenerative disease in particular, that's, um, that's progressive and impacting your ability to get around. You know, we're familiar with grab bars in the shower, that kind of thing. But a, a fully roll-in uh, wheelchair accessible bathroom, fifteen dollars to $20,000. Widening hallways, putting in new flooring so that you don't have trip hazards around. Um, things that are easier to clean, you know, and it's an area that is tempting to spend a lot of money um, because it feels like an investment in where you live, but you are actually putting money into that for yourself and you usually don't get that money out because those repairs are pretty specific to the person who's living there and the next person to buy your house isn't necessarily going to pay for those for you. So you get hit twice. Um, uh, you know, you, you might decide to move instead. And moving is uh, very costly and inconvenient if you're doing it, you know, just because of an, a, an illness or an injury and you aren't able to um, to optimize that timing. That one is Laura, particularly yeah. close to me because I bought a house. Yeah, I mean, those are, you rattled off a, a large list and it's, that it's is a list, yeah. and these are, and, and there are probably dozens and dozens, dozens more. more. Yeah. <laughs> but let me, let me ask you this. And, sure. you know, as I, as I alluded to at the, you know, throughout our show, people can go to the Well Spouse site to get a whole bunch of information about the community. But one of the things that, you know, having been in the retirement business for a long time, we always talk about worksheets. And it's like things that you're going to think about spending in retirement. Is yeah. there something that you're describing, what you're describing today are things that catch you off yeah. guard? Is there a worksheet available or worksheets, depending on your, the disease that you or, or someone may have to help people anticipate these things? Yeah, you know, that's a great idea. Um, it's not something we have. It's, it's a, I think it would be a great tool for families to use. Um, I think a little bit of the challenge here is that some of these, as we talked about earlier, you know, things like AIDS and facility care, you know, very quickly outstrip most families' ability to spend and, and to save for those, uh, for those items. Um, so it can get very overwhelming, I think, to look at it. So you know, that we, we talk a lot in our support group meetings about kind of chipping away at the edges of these things and finding ways, you know, different tax incentives or programs that you might use to, to lower things kind of at the edges. But, you know, to your point about, um, you know, kind of the larger environment for fixing these things, uh, some of these solutions do need to come from that. You know, when you're talking about $250,000 for aid care for somebody who needs it 24 hours a day, it's, you know, the, <laughs> the worksheet is, it feels insufficient. <laughs> yeah, no, that, I mean, that is, that is true. Just trying to, you know, if you're a visual person or, or just to kind of anticipate rather than be being caught off guard. Um, you know, I, I just think that, look, you know, what do I know? But, but for those people that haven't experienced it, it's uh, and maybe, maybe that's something that people uh, who are watching this, they can go and donate uh, to Well Spouse and, I'm, I'm assuming the organization takes donations and, and we do. takes support and they can go to your, your website to do that? That's right. Yes, it's wellspouse.org and you'll see the donate button and you can join if you're a spousal caregiver as well. Absolutely. Well, Laura Whitman, it is. thank you so much for joining us and we appreciate you kind of uh, educating all of us about what we could expect in uh, those golden years or even before that. Thanks so much for joining us and we look forward to having you back on again very soon. Thank you. Look forward to it too. That wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the information in retirement, markets, technology, personal finance, so much more, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. 
We're back again tomorrow. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.